Earth Day has always been important, but is more important than ever. We're putting the stability and health of the entire Earth system at risk. The Earth Day is a reminder that we now have to become what I call stewards or guardians of the stability of the entire planet. In the climate science world, Johan Rockström is known as a bit of a rock star. He's on the 2023 Time 100 list, he has a viral TED Talk, he stars in a Netflix documentary. And when people talk about the practical steps needed to slow climate change, they talk about his work. He's best known as one of the scientists who developed something called the Planetary Boundaries Framework. It's sometimes called the PBs. And it's a way for everyone from scientists to politicians to business leaders to evaluate nine systems that regulate Earth as a livable planet. Each system, or PB, has a boundary that humans can't afford to cross if we want to keep living on Earth. In the latest assessment, six of the nine boundaries are outside of their safe space. These six are climate, biodiversity, fresh water, nitrogen and phosphorus, air pollutants, and chemical overloading. And the United we interviewed Mr. Rockstrom just days after there was a huge and very depressing news report about climate change. There is a dire new report out from the United Nations. Which showed that the planet is warming at a rate that pretty much guarantees things like catastrophic drought, flooding, and species extinction. So what should we focus on right now? The two large transformations we need to urgently accomplish to come back within a manageable climate future and within planetary boundaries is the energy transition, so to phase out fossil fuels, oil, coal, and gas, cutting emissions by half every decade to have a net zero world economy by 2050, and the food system transition. It is about feeding humanity without expanding into the remaining 50% of land areas that are still intact nature, and to produce food in ways that do not destroy water, continue building carbon, and do not pollute air and all the environment around us. Even in the face of these formidable challenges, Rockstrom is still hopeful. He points to green shoots, signs of hope, like the fact that renewable energy is increasing exponentially. We're only today seeing, you know, on average, something like 10% of global electricity coming from solar and wind. If we continue on the pace we are on today, we would have over half, 50% of global electricity coming from wind and solar just by 2030. And the second place he sees green shoots is in changing ways of food production. Conservation tillage is a whole series of practices that have been around for decades. We've tried to copy nature as much as possible to uh, let rooting systems and carbon and soil biology be much more in a healthy state. We can uh, both sequester carbon, but also have more water holding capacity, better rooting depth, more resilient crops. Combine that, with eating more healthy food, having diets that are more diverse can not only give us a better healthy life, but also contribute significantly to a healthy planet. Can we manage the planet? The simple answer is yes, we've done it before. In the late 1970s, early 1980s, we were destroying the stratospheric ozone layer with the big ozone hole caused by chemicals that we used for air conditioners and, and, and spray and, and different shampoo products. Science identified the hole in the ozone layer. Policy responded with the Montreal Protocol in 1987. And industry stepped up and innovated and delivered solutions that were scalable that could take us off those planet damaging chemicals. We can today conclude that the ozone hole is closing in and we've been able to protect life on Earth as we know it. We can do the same for climate. Rockstrom understands that word we is complicated. The fact that we have a world economy that is powered by fossil fuel energy systems is not something that any individual can solve on his or her own, but we can all vote with, with our feet, keep the dialogue alive, engage in, in the pathways towards a solution and, and share those stories with your friends. Because if everyone has a buzz, it creates a momentum, which is, I think, what the world really needs right now. What do we want? Climate justice! Rockstrom teaches for a living. He works with young people so he knows how worried and angry they are about the state of the planet. 
In fact, he's been a mentor of sorts to Greta Thunberg, a relationship that began as she was founding Fridays for Future. With many fellow colleagues over the years, we've been kind of wondering, where are the youth? Because it is, in a way, unacceptable what, what we're doing to planet Earth and that we are at risk of handing over a planet to the next generation, which is less and less livable. When Greta and, and, and all her fellow Fridays for Future youth rose in, in 2018 and, and, and really took off into this global movement, the first global demonstration of the Fridays for Future was held in Berlin. We spent a, a half day together at the Potsdam Institute. We are, as much as we can, supporting the youth movement. They have such a clear message, listen to science and act accordingly. What right do we have to hand over a less livable world to our children than the planet where we were born on? We're in for a jumpy ride. More droughts, floods, heat waves, challenges, melting ice. But we can at least veer off from the most disastrous and unmanageable outcomes. The window for that is still open and we have the solutions. All evidence shows that out in the other end is a more modern, attractive, stable, peaceful, healthier and more prosperous future.